back. Well, Dunstan, you can see it's not just Sakaja. The story just come out. Sakaja's uh, dilemma on, on uh, the degree issue. But uh, there you have it. A number of politicians are now facing the same. Okay, I've just lost the newspaper, but we'll be getting that. There, there it is. There it is, the degree issue. So I'd yeah, just like to get your sentiments on the same. And, of course, uh, uh, the intrigues surrounding these academic papers and what you make of it. Uh, looking at uh, these, most of these candidates, I mean aspirants, uh, candidates were actually uh, cleared by IBC. So what does that mean? And before we continue, also let me uh, in invite and, uh, you know, good morning to Marcus Agenga, Senior Programs Manager at the Elections Observation Group, ELOG. A very good morning. Welcome to M Live as we continue to review the press this morning. Welcome. All right. So, Dunstan, what, what do you make of this? I thank you, as I said, for NTV viewers and for starting these serious discussions mm -hmm. every day on NTV. First and foremost, the, the debate about degrees mm -hmm. is long overdue. This country uh, prides itself mm -hmm. for having a very young generation that almost everybody has a degree. But at the top, mm -hmm. the people who lead them, almost none of them can conclusively produce academic records that start from the entry at the lowest class to the uh, degree level. This, for example, the government and parliament passed a legislation to deal with certification. Mm -hmm. The authority has never been funded today to deal with that question. Mm -hmm. uh, a Japanese writer has always said that Students of A material, B material, C material rarely move to the political arena. Those who do very well at the political arena are the D materials or the failures in life. Mm -hmm. This theory now comes out to be, uh, to be ascertained here that not anybody mm -hmm. can say this was my classmate at the university. Universities are not... At the, the time these people went to university, there were no virtual universities mm -hmm. for anybody to say, I was with my laptop studying in a degree. Two, not even a graduation photo. Third, the question of somebody belaboring that I went to university defending yourself should only produce this is the degree that I, I, I got, this is the minimum entry requirement that I had. So in real essence, I, in, I teach at Catholic University, and I'm encouraging these discussions to proceed on to allow the girls and right. boys we teach at university to get jobs. Mm -hmm. It should now cascade not from the political class, it goes to the public service. All right, so this Most is Most of the issue. people employed in public service, mm -hmm. I'm sure they are waiting, waiting to see how it ends. Mm -hmm. I support these battles. So certainly this is a much more deeper issue than, yes. than what we're seeing. Yes, Let me yes. just bring in uh, Bobby Mkangi as well from uh, uh, just uh, through Zoom just to give us also his perspective on, on the same issue. Bobby, what do you make of this, you know, uh, the Daily Nation calls it fake degrees or is it degrees on sale? And politicians are fighting back to uh, IBC to make sure that uh, what they're actually uh, putting up on the on the table and putting on the table is actually
the issue of uh, elections, when you come to the issue of uh, public service and especially uh, 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 political uh, elections, um, we remember that this is a political right that is covered under our constitution, Article uh, 38. And all Kenyans are supposed to access this right uh, equally. And if there is any uh, encumbrance or limitation to this right, then it has to be uh, reasonable. Uh, it has to be uh, uh, set forth uh, within uh, legislation. For this, it has been. Uh, however, we must remember mm -hmm. that education, and especially higher education in Kenya, uh, is not accessible to many. Uh, and that is because of uh, the expense uh, element to it. And to me, I always feel that to demand that uh, uh, people must have a degree and not show any other uh, qualification uh, that can show that they have capacity and ability to perform and execute uh, certain offices. Uh, for that matter, it does limit many Kenyans uh, 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 to participate equally uh, within the political uh, frame. Okay. So I think going forward, mm -hmm. and uh, I have argued this, the Elections Act should actually be amended uh, to accommodate. And I think this is part of what I've seen, uh, I think, uh, uh, Azimio uh, in one of their uh, president, uh, or rather, uh, candidate trailer, uh, uh, Odinga's uh, uh, 10 points. Okay. Uh, I think he correctly recalled uh, Azimio. Yes, the uh, 10 questions. Uh, yeah. Mm. Did, uh, Shahada Jitihada. Mm. Oh, the agenda. Kwamba, is... Yes, the philosophy that mm -hmm. uh, somebody can be qualified through experience. Somebody can be able to show that beyond educational uh, certification, they have experience, they have skills that they have gained over time. Uh, you know, they have done uh, things okay. that give them the ability and capacity right. to perform certain of All right. that is what All right. will help Kenyans and candidates okay. going into the future and, and so that you don't be... have mm -hmm. cropping every other time. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Bobby. And we're certainly going to get even more deeper into, into that particular issue. Uh, uh, also, just uh, uh, welcoming to the program is Ishmael Nyaribo, uh, lawyer, or I mean advocate of the High Court. Thank you and welcome to AM Live. Uh, let's now get Marcus Genga from the Elections Observation Group, ELOG, also just to give his sentiments on the same. Marcus, uh, I mean, uh, so we have uh, differing sentiments here. Of course, this is quite an issue that has created a buzzing debate, not just on social media across the country, on this degree issue. What, what do you make of it? Thank you very much. I think the debate on uh, degree, degree issue is a very fundamental uh, issue, as Dennis was speaking about mm -hmm. in the morning. But also, I want us to think it just uh, not only in this election, but mm -hmm. I think the fundamental question we need to ask ourselves, whether, and, and learning from other jurisdictions, mm -hmm. uh, other, other, other areas, other countries, whether degree is essential mm -hmm. uh, for as, as a leadership requirement. Mm -hmm. and, and that's perhaps is the question we need to ask ourselves. Uh, whether, and of course, as you've noticed, discussions whether we need to amend the law to erase the issue of degree requirement, uh, because some people think that it is not essential component of mm -hmm. being a good leader. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is something that we leave for another day. I think we are bound by the laws right. of this nation. Okay. And, and, and I think that because the law has spoken to this matter, mm -hmm. uh, we all candidates and uh, those aspiring for leadership positions must adhere mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the legal provisions because okay. they know right. uh, what the law requires. And I think it will be very sad 
if a leader who is an epitome of uh, sobriety and ethical standards mm -hmm. were to cheat their way into power. That would mm -hmm. be very, very, very sad. It will be. Yeah. All right. So uh, as we continue to just uh, take a look at uh, the newspaper, so very quickly, uh, I know we don't have much time, but we'll certainly be getting into the degree issue much deeper in a moment. Uh, on the splash uh, page of the Daily Nation, uh, the Standard, I beg your pardon, Exposed state of grand wastage accountability just days after President Uhuru Kenyatta warned next government against wasting borrowed funds. Auditor General's report revealed how his administration could not account for billions allocated to various state departments. So you have about 1.6 trillion, that's the amount of tax arrears not collected by the KRA. 5.6, uh, 56.5 billion, the cost of 61 state department funded projects that have delayed and about 12.5 billion shillings. The amount the ICT ministry was not able to account for. Well, this is uh, what page, uh, let's get that. Uh, I think that's in the inside pages here. Uh, the fourth and uh, fifth page of uh, the standard and it gives a uh, more in depth on the same, uh, uh, talking about uh, the Auditor General flagging ministries and state agencies that have mismanaged public resources uh, amid the rot, suppliers and contractors are owed billions of shillings in pending bills. Ishmael, maybe if you can just comment on this particular issue here on, on, on the standard. And of course, this is uh, quite a worrying uh, trend that, you know, President Uhuru Kenyatta says, uh, you know, by June 1st, warning that his successor. Come August, that the corruption menace will still be alive and spreading. Mm. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. having me. I, I think we appreciate the fact that uh, leadership is uh, mm -hmm. leadership at that higher level is, uh, in a sense, complex. Mm -hmm. Here is the head of state. He does not want wastage, and you, we know very well that uh, wastage is really a product of uh, corruption and, uh, you know, greed. And we see that it has been there in President uh, Kenyatta's uh, regime. But he's now saying that the next government must ensure that this wastage stops. Uh -huh. he's, I think he's talking something about the technocrats and the bureaucracies that exist in government. Don't forget, uh, we see the media is saying that KRA you know, has collected uh, a shortfall of certain billions of money. And some of this uh, uh, wastage we are talking about could be fun, funds that were allocated for, say, dams and uh -huh. infrastructure. but it was not utilized for that purpose. Probably it was diverted or it's actually with the line ministry and it could mm -hmm. be brought back to the exchequer. So ideally, you know, uh, we get excited uh, 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 really mm -hmm. uh, uh, imagining that uh, Raila Odinga will go to State House in, in, in August this year. Why am I saying that? We get excited because this is a guy who has been in the street all throughout his life. Uh, we are not even so sure that he will sit in state house throughout if this kind of wastage goes on. I mean, he could uh, rally his supporters and say we need to deal with these technocrats mm -hmm. and the people who are diverting uh, national funds. So I, I cannot say it is stuck with just one head of state or Uhuru Kenyatta, but the people working, you know, mm -hmm. in, in higher offices, the permanent secretaries, the director of financial, uh, finances must be you know, on their toes to ensure uh, that uh, uh, a lot of this money that goes into tea, newspapers, flowers, that is excessively exaggerated should uh, mm -hmm. uh, not happen again. All right, all right, all right. And uh, okay, so uh, still on the standard, so very quickly, independent candidates defy calls to step aside for UDA ticket holders. So here, I report there. Independent candidates from the North Rift defying calls to drop their bids in favor of UDA candidates. And this is despite, you know, calls by President, uh, Deputy President William Ruto and uh, his running mate Rigavi Gashagwa and other allies to support the six-piece voting pattern, which says the plan has been compromised. We also do have here uh, another story, Matiangi vowing to flush out criminals as he tours Rongai. Remember that? brazen attack on a lady at uh, the at, in Rongai of course uh, you know you saw I think you saw the thugs brandishing even an AK-47 while robbing the woman in yeah. Rongai so that was quite uh, uh, very 
uh, intriguing and, 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 and scary as well. So away from the standard, uh, let's get to, you know, quickly, Business Daily. Uh, the cost of bank loans reached 27 month high on T-bills. Uh, they have it, uh, Stand Chartered, reporting double, doubling of fraud threats in just one year. That's just part of the report. KCB says English Point directors diverted funds in 5.2 billion dispute. On uh, the third page, uh, let's get that on the third page of, uh -huh. oh, 4 million face hangers, queries raised on the weatherman data. Very interesting, actually, uh, report here. And if you remember, this just touches not only on, you know, the issue of finances, but also human and human health. And uh, let's see what's on the East African, the East African Congo crisis. Museveni and Uhuru step in. <coughs> Uganda is worried that it could get embroiled in the tensions just months after ending its own three-year border impasse with Rwanda. And also on uh, the front page of the Taifa Leo, Nyumba Zaruto Raila Zateketea. So, yeah, vita ya kwandani kwandani miongoni mwa whoever is uh, vying those different seats katika both Azimio and Kenya Kwanza. It says via chacha na kuatarisha matamanio ya vyama viku kupata ubunge wengi katika bunge lijalo na magavana. So, uh, quickly, that's uh, what's on uh, the uh, nation, the standard, and uh, the star very quickly. President Uhuru Kenyatta orders the revamp of the DCI Cyber Security Crime Unit. Uh, Ministries of Interior, ICT, to come up with uh, a program in two weeks. So that's on page six. And of course, persons with albinism pushing for state recognition. So, all right, so that's what's on the Daily Nation and uh, the Star, as well as the Standard and other uh, publications uh, this morning. Uh, it's just about 32 minutes past 6 a.m.
All right, thank you for staying with us. This is AM Live. Once again, allow me to introduce my uh, guest this morning. Uh, that we have Dan Omari, lawyer, political commentator, Ishmael Nyaribu, advocate of the High Court. Via Zoom, we do have Bobby Mkangi, constitutional lawyer, and Marcus Agenga, senior programs manager at the Elections Observation Group, ELOG. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us uh, this morning. So let's just now delve um, a little bit more deeper into this issue. Of course, a splash on uh, most of uh, the dailies exposed uh, uh, issue of degree battle. And uh, we had a report there on uh, specifically touching uh, Sakaja, that is the Nairobi uh, senator. But of course, there are other leaders and politicians who are facing the same issue. We've given your thoughts on, 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 on what it means. But on the case of Sakaja's degree quagmire, do you think perhaps there was a lapse? And, and we'll start with, you know, uh, the political party uh, uh, taking, you know, due diligence to um, clear him to, you know, clear him to run for uh, that uh, particular ticket and uh, candidature for the Nairobi gubernatorial uh, seat. I'll begin with Ishmael because you had not make a, you not made a, a, a remark on this. Yeah. I, I don't think the party, the mm -hmm. political party, really uh, made any lapse in my view, mm -hmm. because uh, what facilities does the political party have? to determine whether the degree you have given them is genuine or fake. I mean, they will just accept the certificates as they are. And uh, if they needed to counter check, of course, that would be the national examinations, uh, the universities, which will have to reconfirm. But uh, as far as uh, party level is concerned, they demand that you provide a certificate and you provide it. What would be internally the reason for suspecting that we think you are lying by giving us this certificate. It but has to come diligence, from outside. Due, di due diligence just to make sure that, you know, whoever, every person who is joining your party must be able to <coughs> qualify to a certain extent you see, and prove that point. That is very true. Uh, every time I walk to, for example, KRA offices, I issue my, my ID card and they uh, agree me. I mean, I just go inside. That particular identity card could be anything. There are structures and levels within which uh, certain people must operate. If you seek admission to the university, you provide your Form 4 certificate. Mm -hmm. Hardly do universities go back to counter check. The assumption is mm -hmm. if you say you are in a certain school and you present a certificate, then it's assumed you actually did your fourth form. Unless somebody else comes and says there is an issue, like now it has uh, emerged that uh, uh, there are people who know Sakaja, there are people who know that Sakaja was in the University of Nairobi mm -hmm. all the time. And now him, he says that he graduated, but the university is saying, no, you did not. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, again, he probably mutated and uh, went to Tim's University in Uganda. We don't know when, but he, it, it is him to say, mm -hmm. and it is Tim's University to say. Mm -hmm. uh, the, only, I, the, only, uh, the only thing I wanted to repeat on this uh, degree issue mm -hmm. is uh, I had uh, my uh, brother Mukangi saying that uh, you should have some experience and you should, mm -hmm. you know, who which commission or which body will vet that particular experience we are talking about. So I think we must agree that as a young nation, we have come from certain you know, skirmishes and mistakes. We are trying to cross that. Even this issue of degree, probably in the future, might actually be removed. But at this stage, in order for us to put everything together, institutions are being encouraged to look for expertise. And the only way we are finding uh, we can know who is really better in this or that is by saying let them have certain minimum uh, qualifications. And right. it's quite unfair mm -hmm. that leaders can actually cheat. If, if I was in, the, in, in Sakaja's position, honestly, I, mean, I would simply say this is not my time. I will come back. And he's so young. He can actually go back to class today to the University of Nairobi and obtain his certificate. But and we will elect him in 2027 actually without question. But because because he, he fits, the, the, he fits he, he, the people of Nairobi really like him. Mm -hmm. but, but to come out here and say, I graduated here. Oh, no, sorry, I graduated from here. This is a young man. He can actually go back to the university, clear his <coughs> uh, 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 studies, and come back in 2027. I, I can assure you it is very difficult to beat Sakaja. But with these kind of, you know, skirmishes now around him, uh, his certificate and all that, I, I think he, he really has a lot to answer to his fans here. All right. Well, well suddenly, Dan, you know, in his defense here, actually, he says, 
in this defense against the petitions that were filed was that the graduation booklet which was submitted for the occasion before the tribunal omitted the page that had his name and that the petition is against one another person Sakaja Koske Johnson and not him who's by the name Sakaja Johnson Arthur anyway what does that still say about you know a, a member of parliament who served as a senator in this country what had already been cleared and and, and was serving as a mem as a member of parliament and now his academic qualifications being put on the spot i uh, thank you viewers three issues come to perspective one sakaja and the likes in 2013 2017 mm -hmm. were cleared to contest what needs to be put to perspective is was the IEBC then mm -hmm. as firm as it is now in application of the law? Mm -hmm. So because they thought in 2013 and 2017, when Jubilee had completely uh, emasculated the IEBC, that IEBC could clear anybody, that IEBC is a different animal that they are dealing with. The Jebkati they knew is a different monster in terms of implementation of the law as it is. And that is why all these people who have problems mm -hmm. are arguing that we had been cleared previously. Lawyers will tell you that it is that time that you have been caught by the law that is critical. You cannot use that evidence previous. For example, Jimmy Wanjigi was trying to bring in the question of Walter Mongare, and immediately the IBC brought back and recalled that certificate. Number two, the second question that we, we as a nation are discussing, Bob Mkangi says, a qualification of a degree is not part of the constitutional provision of Article 38. Mm -hmm. What I remember... I am one of the, um, the advocates uh, plus others who went to court to challenge the degree qualification for the MCS. Right. And the court agreed with us and removed that clause. Members of parliament also went to court. I was not part of that, challenging the degree qualification. The court removed that. So whoever knew he wanted to contest as a governor or as a president knew the Elections Act prescribes that as a minimum qualification. Could have gone to court, challenge that provision. Failure to challenge that provision, the substantive law is as it is now. It will not be swayed. But the question you look at it, that is as a lawyer. Sakaja has said, one, the person sued is a different person. Right. And definitely, as a lawyer, if they do not seek to amend that, that, that the person we have sued is Sakaja Ada uh, Johnson, they still stick with that on technicality. Mm -hmm. That matter will be dismissed that the party that has been sued is a wrong party. Mm -hmm. And Sakaja will be in the ballot. All right. Number two, Sakaja has raised the question that the document, the annexure where his name appears was not appended to the annexure in court. If indeed he has brought another appendix that was left, then that case will go in favor of Sakaja on the ground that the court was not given all the materials, an offense or what we call material non-disclosure to the court. You lied to the court by bringing documents excluding that which exonerates Sakaja. So on technicality, and I've seen the lawyers have gone not on merit, the lawyers have gone on technicality. They are likely to save Sakaja because once the court dismisses that matter on technicality, you cannot again reinstitute a fresh matter to, to deal with that issue. But politically, let me talk now as a political before Before, analyst. before I get into the, the political aspect uh, of it, uh, I'd just like us to also now get uh, uh, Bobby Mkangi's uh, uh, you know, sentiments on, on the same. And you know, with with any, I mean, what happens if anybody with a degree, uh, you know, from a university, foreign university, goes 
to the commission of university, uh, it's called the commission for university <coughs> education, yeah, that is Q, for verification, you know, they are the ones who are supposed to <coughs> confirm whether this particular degree is, you know, authentic or not authentic. So where then, you know, Bobby does that, does that, you know, this authority, Q, and perhaps even, I think, uh, very important is uh, the National Qualification Authority of Kenya. Where does this come in to ensure that, you know, the political aspirants and candidates seeking uh, elective positions in this country are able to verify that the documentation and academic qualifications they have are authentic? Yes, I think um, the process of uh, authenticating and certifying that uh, the degrees or any other documents, not only degrees, but other documents that uh, these processes um, and candidates or aspirants uh, thereof are supposed to furnish uh, initially uh, with their political parties. And perhaps I would mention that I think I support your <clears throat> earlier sentiment that uh, indeed uh, within uh, political parties uh, set up and because it's an issue that has been uh, cropping up uh, over the years, uh, perhaps going forward, uh, parties should ensure that they have some level of mechanism of uh, ensuring that uh, aspirants uh, or who in eventually turn into candidates uh, under their banner uh, do furnish them uh, with the authentic and proper documents. Uh, that the paper trail is uh, correct because as we can see right now, uh, if the case will be that uh, uh, Sakaja is not uh, clear, then apart from the electorate uh, of Nairobi, uh, those who support him and uh, intend for him, uh, his party right. uh, will have lost a great opportunity of, uh, you know, winning and providing services uh, to, to 190. So I think going forward, uh, parties may want to look into this and ensure that uh, uh, in future elections, and especially during nominations, they can put up some level of mechanisms uh, to ensure that uh, uh, those who want to express their political rights uh, by vying for seats through the political party do come with the, uh, you know, clean papers, the paper trail can be checked out. And uh, this, I think, uh, uh, brings into question or the issue that you've also asked about the institutions that uh, we have created as Kenyans uh, to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, we authenticate uh, the process of education one, uh, but also certify uh, whatever uh, certificates uh, do come out of uh, these uh, processes. And so I think political parties can have an opportunity of uh, seeking to use these institutions uh, right from the early stages, uh, demand uh, that aspirants uh, do get uh, qualification or rather authentication uh, from these institutions. Uh, or uh, there is uh, an interplay between or an interface uh, between uh, the political parties and these uh, institutions um, uh, to ensure that uh, you know they don't get caught up like we are seeing right now uh, quite late uh, in the game uh, where candidates and parties should be concentrating on uh, campaigning and winning uh, these positions uh, but find themselves uh, expending a lot of resources in terms of uh, time and, and money uh, trying to uh, deal of uh, this fire. So I think, uh, yes, uh, I think it's uh, Dunstan uh, who had mentioned earlier that unfortunately, when you look at the, um, uh, the authority uh, for authenticating uh, qualifications uh, in as much as it exists uh, is not uh, sufficiently uh, resourced to probably undertake uh, its duties uh, optimally. All right. I think going forward, this is something that uh, we should uh, uh, look into uh, as a country uh, to ensure that uh, this institution that we have created, which is very important, and uh, I also support in as much as I did lay out my philosophical thinking around the issue of degree, I do support uh, my co-panelists who say, yes, as of now, this is the law. Uh, that is what we should uh, 
stick to. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why it's important for these institutions uh, to be well resourced. Uh, because if this remains a law, then uh, we will rely on these institutions right. um, uh, to be able to know whether uh, whatever is placed on the table okay. by a candidate, but not only a candidate, uh, in other jobs, even in the private sector, where uh, uh, certain certificates must be furnished, okay. that, they, that they are the uh, certificates. Right. So going forward, I think, you know, ensuring that uh, we resource ourselves properly. Okay. To tackle and deal with this uh, issue. Issue. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Bobby. Um, um, so you know, uh, Marcus, let's just p uh, pick on on a point that Bobby has raised. So in you know, in an event that Sakaja's um, clearance is revoked by the in uh, by the dispute resolution uh, sitting to hear the case, does IBC have that particular room to accept another nomination from UDA? They do. Uh, they do. The law allows them mm -hmm. uh, to to give chance to the party, mm -hmm. and I think there are some specific timelines that the party will be given mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to uh, submit another name. Uh, and I think uh, so. In short, yes, uh, the the law provides and gives that. So there's uh, a window. Of there's a window. Yes. Yeah. UDA. Yeah. But but you can imagine how rigorous that would be. That would entail an entire nomination process, from you know setting up a date, uh, picking up you know for, for for fairness, picking candidates who are interested in that position, mm -hmm. and in case there are disputes that arise yeah, from this yeah, particular, yeah. so then look it, and looking at it, the, what less than fifty six days to the yeah, election, yeah. And, mean, and and I guess IBC doesn't have that you know yeah. uh, room to wait for UDA to accept another nomination. I think what I would advise is that now. As you know, as I think the the party should should have a plan B, mm -hmm. <laughs> just in case things don't go their way. Right. Uh, but I, I think I mean the, I'm sure there might there could have been several other aspirants who had expressed interest to run against I mean to run for this particular mm -hmm. political seat, and I'm sure they're there. And I'm sure the party is not sleeping; they're also keenly watching, and mm -hmm. they have what uh, they have anticipated mm -hmm. uh, the timelines and, and i'm sure uh, if i were in uda party mm -hmm. i'd be able to put the systems uh, in place so that i'm not caught uh, caught off guard mm -hmm. uh, but uh, <coughs> i mean let me just say one thing uh, about this matter of sakaja but generally speaking i mean there is the court of public opinion mm -hmm. uh, the moment uh, that fraud and forgery and insincerity is smearing your campaign, whether genuine or not. As Dan was saying, you know, it could be dismissed in many, many grounds as he, as he has already done. Mm -hmm. But there's a way in which this particular uh, event uh, has, has, has wounded the candidacy of Sakaja mm -hmm. in some way. He may, he may emerge out of it. A number of guys have emerged out of them before. Uh, but there's a big number of uh, of supporters who would who will be treating his candidature with a lot of suspicion mm -hmm. uh, moving forward. And and I want to reiterate the fact that uh, you know for election preparedness, for elections to be successful, all these institutions and organisations must work in concert. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I mean, having about ten or, or so thousand aspirants coming to your desk. Believe me, you won't have time to go through the papers and write or whatever it is. So there must be a mechanism and, and, and financially uh, and, 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 and must be resourced in either human or financially resourced to allow us not waste time in right. courts. Waste time of taxpayers' money, waste our time and the party's time to be able to, uh, to back check some of All these right. things. Yeah. All right. All right, Marcus. Ishmael, I'll get you, uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on, and we'll do this after the break because we have to really take it. Uh, he's talked about wounding the perception, and this comes from the, you know. When we come back, we have to discuss that. So let's take a short break here on M Live. We'll be back. Stay with us.
Hi, I'm Jeremiah Wahome. I'll be driving car number 30 at the 2022 WRC Safari Rally in Naivasha. Come and see some exciting action. Jumps. Slides. Thrill. And support us Kenyan drivers. See you there. NOFBI is a national fiber optic cable, so it's the same as having the national highways. We wanted to have a homogeneous, government-owned backbone. ICT Authority has managed to deploy over 9,000 kilometers of fiber. In many countries, ICT is an integral part of the teaching and learning processes. I want to use internet to learn chess so that I can become the Grand Master of Chess one day. Majama, tumeishi pamoja vizuri kama majirani. Watoto wetu wamecheza shuleni na hata nyumbani. Haijalishi wewe ni kabila gani. Tumekuwa wa Kenya wangwana sana. Lakini inapofika wakati wa uchaguzi, chuki vurugu vita na siasa mbaya. Zinaingia hadi tunasao hizo miaka zote tumeishi kwa amani. Mbona tofauti zetu za kisiasa zinafanya tusielewane? Uchaguzi utakuja na utapita, lakini Kenya itabaki kuwa nchi yetu. Kwa hivyo tusikubali fitina na kutumiwa vita. To get meme Kenya by Anna Ogwas. Dial star 811 star 929 hash. Skiza na Nation. NOFBI is a national fiber optic cable, so it's the same as having the national highways. We wanted to have a homogeneous, government-owned backbone. ICT Authority has managed to deploy over 9,000 kilometers of fiber. In many countries, ICT is an integral part of the teaching and learning processes. I want to use internet to learn chess so that I can become the Grand Master of Chess one day. All right, thanks for staying with us. This is AM Live as we continue to converse the issues surrounding the political landscape in the country. Our focus uh, this morning has been on uh, the degree issue and uh, number of uh, political candidates and uh, aspirants seeking elective positions have been put on the sport. And Ishmael, you are to, you know, uh, talk about and, uh, you know, uh, per perhaps give an answer on the remarks made by Marcus, you know, wounding uh, Sakaja's, you know, uh, public image with this entire degree quagmire. What does this mean for his political... Yeah, you know, when we were on break, we just shared with my brothers here, and it's, it's exactly what Dunstan wanted to allude to when right. he said he wanted to, uh, uh, you know, analyze on the political angle. Uh, f first and foremost, it is true, my brother is saying, that uh, with that kind of mm -hmm. mud already appearing to be on the face of Mr. Sakaja, mm -hmm. he should simply walk away. But the truth is, who cares about uh, that kind of mud slinging in this country? Who cares? I and you care, but the masses who vote, the largest number of supporters of uh, Mr. Sakaja mm -hmm. are nowhere near embarrassment. They have been so embarrassed, they are so ashamed. I mean, because of the, 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 the economic conditions, talking to them about a university degree is, is, is far-fetched. They are not worried about that. Mm -hmm. If you look at uh, how Sonkoism as a concept came up and who supported, for example, Sonko, the whole of Nairobi, even <coughs> today, after what happened within Nairobi, Sonko is a threat in Mombasa. So when you say that uh, 
Sakaja should consider maybe not even running and all that. It's a good wish for us. As professionals, as elites, yes. But how many are we? We are the minority in this country. So that is why, again, I go back to saying that in a country where proper policies, proper you know, administrative procedures are not regarded by the masses, I mean, citizens can walk in the street fighting each other. It is important to put the house in order through these conditions that are being set by institutions, be it the degrees, you know, be it this is what you have to do. And, and, and I think when we discuss this deeper, we shall probably see how actually the judiciary itself should be very objective, should be very cautious on how they interfere or come into the institutional disputes that actually would be left to the institution itself, mm -hmm. right. you know, to, to, to run. So in terms of how many understand these concepts in terms of whether we should allow people who have been, you know, so much, you know, talked about in the negative sense into the public limelight, we are the minority. Right. The majority do not care, do not mind about mm -hmm. who has a degree, who has forged it, who doesn't have it. That's why we have a word called Viongos or okay. Kiongos. Uh, Bo uh, Bobby, uh, as I bring you into that conversation, you know, Nairobi is facing uh, quite a challenge here because we have two top contenders, as, as we already know. Uh, there's Johnson Sakaja under the UDA ticket. Then we also have uh, Polycap Igade. But also, Igade is uh, facing challenges, and this is after a voter also went to court to petition uh, the court and he wants Igade uh, to be disqualified uh, for abandoning you know, his duties as a deputy governor then uh, under Sonko. Remember between 2017 up to now 2022 saying that Igade did not uh, tender his resignation. Where does this leave us, you know, this uh, constitutional quagmire as I might call it? Oh, well... Perhaps before I jump onto that, I'd like to put on the heels of what uh, mm -hmm. my brother Ishmael has said. Um, the, the majority of uh, Kenyans, if I would, I would add, not only Nairobians, mm -hmm. uh, may not be particularly attracted to the debate around the decree, who holds a decree or not, because majority of them don't. Right. You know, and and each of them do not hold degrees, not because they don't want to, but because of the cost implications and the and the obstacles that have been placed uh, for them uh, in their quest of uh, acquiring uh, such uh, certification. So, at the end of the day, when you see, as he say, the concept of Sonko, uh, you find that it is actually very much uh, representative of uh, the masses and in as much as uh, yes we want to put our house in order and everything we must remember we are also a representative uh, democracy and at the end of the day uh, people will uh, fall behind and support those they feel that uh, in one way or another rhetorically rhetorically uh, if it's in conduct um, those people do represent them so in terms of the representation uh, and, and, and the philosophical element of uh, the constitution. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, who the electorate back. And that's why for me, I think uh, going forward, we should also be very careful that uh, we do not create, uh, and the constitution also warns us about this, we do not create uh, institutional and administrative obstacles that prevent Kenyans from enjoying not only their political rights, but all other rights uh, that are enshrined in the constitution. Uh, coming to the issue of uh, Polycap uh, Igade, I think to me, in as much uh, as uh, you know, the law would demand that uh, uh, he perhaps uh, should have uh, tendered in uh, his resignation uh, in writing, uh, uh, I think his conduct in terms of uh, leaving office, not uh, performing the duties uh, uh, of, of, of uh, that office uh, for the period that he did, um, uh, did uh, confirm uh, that uh, he was not the deputy uh, governor of Nairobi uh, from that time henceforth. And we've seen the development uh, uh, subsequent to that. Um, I think uh, probably the bigger question would be uh, to be asked why um, you know, he did uh, what he did uh, and, and how he did it. Um, 
in, in, in being questioned, uh, you know, why he did uh, abandon uh, the electorate of Nairobi uh, that uh, did elect him, because we remember that him uh, being a running mate of uh, the then candidate uh, 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 Sonko, right. who was elected uh, by uh, Nairobians uh, mm -hmm. to serve them. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, perhaps uh, deeper into the question of uh, whether his resignation was proper or not, uh, what uh, this uh, person, uh, I would assume the petitioner, is uh, seeking to confirm from Igave is whether uh, he will come into office again and uh, once he faces uh, a few uh, frustrating uh, events, um, he's going to uh, ditch and abandon uh, Nairobians uh, once again. Okay. I think that's what uh, uh, the bigger question and the bigger issue in terms of uh, testing uh, his personality, okay. uh, testing him as, as, as a candidate and uh, trying to see how much of skin he has uh, in this game uh, going forward okay. is what uh, this petition and what Nairobians mm -hmm. may perhaps uh, be looking into uh, towards uh, getting to voting right. uh, on August. Uh, on the 9th of August, indeed. Uh, as we wind up, Dunstan, I know you also <laughs> uh, were talking uh, and also just wanted to add on, on, on the political perception uh, that would befall Sakaja right after this. Uh, just Let's just wind up with that remark as we, as we continue with the other issues. On the political uh, issues, one, this is a political contest. Mm -hmm. It's not a legal contest. First, let me start the justification for what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. One, who took Sakaja to court? Is it he himself who fronted somebody to take him to court? But you have so, four petitions. I'm court saying mm -hmm. politicians can fund people to go to court for them to have limelight. Today, all the media is focused on Sakaja. Two, who has brought a Gade petition? Is it also a Gade feeling that after serving people tea all over, Sakaja is taking the limelight. He is also fronted somebody to sue him so that he comes up. <laughs> Number two, if you look at the question of politics, real politics, the argument has always been corruption. The people who have been branded corrupt are the ones who normally are elected. Two, the people... We start from and Jomo. What, what does that say about us? As a, I'm saying as, as, a, as, a, as a country, right. well, kindly, <laughs> as a people, in 1963, right. we brought in Jomo Kenyatta, a, a, a person who was in jail to be our leader. We have developed Baba. Look at Baba. Baba, at one time, people were asking whether Baba has a degree in engineering. That debate nowadays does not feature. It was part of the politics of the day that Baba has no degree at all in engineering. When you come to William Ruto, the other day when he was supposed to graduate for his PhD degree, he had to defy it one year because the politicians entered into the fray and started questioning the academic qualifications of William Ruto. So this narrative about academic qualification is politics. And really politics. Those, these politicians will either sponsor it or these politicians or the other politicians will sponsor that for the benefit of the ballot. And that is what I agree with Nyaribo, that if Sakaja succeeds, it is a landslide. If anybody succeeds, it is a landslide. We are even going to have election petitions after the results have been done, based on emotional angles. Mm -hmm. I know Christians are watching, and they know very well that when Jesus died, the only reason Christianity is in, now in the NTV in Nairobi is a term called persecution. The disciples were persecuted, out of it the word grew. So these people now, they are telling their people, we are being persecuted. And the people who are persecuting us don't vote them in. So, but, uh, but Dunstan, you know, with with a minimum requirement for for you know, that vying, is the law. Vying to that you know, is the on law. a governor's position, 
That is indeed the that law. That is the law. But it is there constitutionally to ensure that whoever holds that office... That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. That is the law. Obama at one time, the president of uh, USA, was said to not to be an American. A birth certificate was brought showing that he's not an American. All right. Donald Trump, so he himself faced these things. It is okay. a game of politics. Okay, so let's just leave that now to uh, uh, the Dispute Resolution uh, Committee. And of course, uh, uh, the committee said to make its uh, ruling tomorrow. We'll be very interested uh, to hear about that. Let's just uh, move a little bit more to uh, the issue on uh, the <coughs> electoral body, that is IBC's uh, preparedness for this election. We've seen a lot of, uh, you know, um, issues coming up from uh, the voter register. Uh, the other day, IBC talking about 1.18 million voters will be knocked off that particular voters register ahead of the election. Uh, maybe here some numbers, and this is coming from the pre preliminary audit that was done by KPMG. Uh, 246,000 dead voters. You have 481,000 uh, voters have been registered more than once. You have 226,000 voters registered with IDs that do not validly belong to them. Uh, you know, Marcus, I'd, I'd like to get your, your reaction on this uh, issue of, you know, the credibility of the voter register. You know, and this being a key component of uh, the election process. Thank you very much. I think we, we as ELOG and other mm -hmm. uh, civil society organizations, we, we, we've spoken about this matter. Mm -hmm. And, and, and hold the view that the credibility of an electoral process, and especially in a, in a hotly contested one like ours in Kenya, will heavily rely on, mm -hmm. on the sanctity of that voter register. Mm -hmm. A number of uh, short uh, falls we have noticed. <coughs> First, uh, it's, it's, it's laudable that the IBC commissioned a KPMG to undertake this audit. But uh, a number of things, uh, let me just say about three things that ought to have happened. Uh, first, that because of the interest, the deep interests mm -hmm. that uh, a number of stakeholders have in these elections, they ought to have been involved, at least the bare min minimum, when these terms of reference of uh, KPMG were being developed. What method were they using to audit this register? We don't know. Number two, the IBC has given us snapshots of the report, the preliminary reports. Mm -hmm. uh, why can't the report be made public, mm -hmm. that we read it for ourselves, we, we, we know in details of, of what's happening? Mm -hmm. The third component to this register is the questions around uh, timelines. Uh, now that w they have identified some of these preliminary findings, how much time does IBC have to be able to effect these changes and be able to publish uh, this register for, for us to know. Now, those questions are very fundamental uh, because then if they are not addressed, chances of someone going to court to challenge uh, the outcome of this election mm -hmm. is, are very high. And, and they have very good ground uh, to, to, to uh, be listened to because then what are you being admitted to vote on, on, on what basis are you being uh, admitted to vote? So that is very important mm -hmm. uh, for us. As ELOG, we even wanted to undertake an independent audit of this register, ourselves as ELOG, mm -hmm. so that then, because we want to contribute to cleaning up of this register. And, and you noticed both the leading coalitions, you had UDA mm -hmm. candidate and you had Azimio candidate mm -hmm. speaking to the issue of the register. And it's very important that, that the IBC takes it very seriously and, and that the information is out there stakeholders are involved in every and they, you walk with them from the very word go and to it until the end so that All then right. they're able to appreciate the findings they are part of the findings and nothing is surely in mystery mm -hmm. and i think for me it is it's a very key issue, issue. Uh, and that is, you, you you've seen that they have moved that the the auto have published the register on the 9th of uh, this month that has it's, been pushed, been to the pushed. Will, will it be pushed again mm -hmm. So that's, that, a that, that's a big question. A big question. Uh, so, Ishmael, you know, considering you know the events of at least the past two elections, and specific, specifically, you know, uh, the issues on uh, on last election uh, and thereafter, the nullification of the election, the Supreme Court ruling, the noise now from you know Azimio's uh, presidential candidate, Raila Odinga, uh, asking that that turn questions. You have uh, the deputy president also raising his concerns on the same. This should be quite telling. Should Kenyans be concerned? Well, you see, 
the, the two gentlemen you have mentioned mm -hmm. know a little bit more than we know, even than I know, mm -hmm. in terms of how that election is done, in, term, in terms of manipulation of election figures, in terms of the system and how uh, it is how, actually how? <laughs> doctored, in terms of not opening the servers. The two gentlemen actually know more, and mm -hmm. I think they mm -hmm. belong to a certain ritualistic cult which cannot reveal everything to the public. They keep some stuff to their grips. H because how, would, how would they know, being, you know, key players in this you see, process? We know that Chepukati conducted 2017 elections. Mm -hmm. He was prepared to the hilt. But now today, William Ruto will say, this guy, I think you are trying to influence him. Mm -hmm. uh, you should not interfere. Raila will say, if you don't release, you know, clean the system by a certain date, then it means, you saw right, Ruto saying that uh, a million votes had actually been knocked off the mm -hmm. register. Indeed. Even before anybody had reported. So these people know, but uh, the, the, you asked me, I think IABC should be given a bit of space. Mm -hmm. In terms, look, now they are discussing disputes. And we have about 50 days to elections. Mm -hmm. And those disputes, you know, they are really mental cons mentally consuming, uh, uh, time-wise also consuming. So they should be left alone. And I think that uh, uh, IBC dispute, mm -hmm. I, I think, should be restructured to involve a different kind of uh, tribunal or panel that does not in, in include those, uh, uh, those uh, commissioners. And again, it's a matter of the law that we'll have to be looked into. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, in engaging them in all these kind of things which are, to me, in a way sideshows from what their central role is, then when are they going to look at the register if they are going to deal with these disputes? Mm -hmm. So I think IBC as it is, is actually determined to deliver the elections. Mm -hmm. But the politicians who know certain things we do not understand or do not know, want to take advantage of that. They, you see, what we see on the news is totally different from what's going on behind the scenes. So I, I think it's all about politicians who are interfering with the IEBC. That's one aspect. And then I think the structure of IEBC in terms of engaging it into other areas which uh, they, are, they have no expertise, actually, in terms of dispute resolution, the law should be looked into so that they have enough time to go about their mandate without having to delve into the disputes itself. I mean, right. We have so many judges. We have so many tribunals. We have so many lawyers. They can be you know, uh, 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 brought in within IABC so that they can independently deal with the disputes that are, uh, that are, that are you know, uh, uh, handled at the IABC level. Uh, um, Bobby, do you perhaps hold the view that the electoral agency is quite overwhelmed at this point? And what's at the top uh, of your list of concerns? Yes, I, I think so. Um, uh, however, I would, uh, I would want to, you know, commend the, the, the institution um, thus far uh, compared to how it probably used to function in previous elections mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, for instance, this issue of uh, cleaning up the, uh, the register, uh, getting um, an independent, uh, you know, uh, audit uh, Farm and in this case, KPMG to look into an audit register and for it to actually, you know, declare that, yes, it has discovered that there are mistakes. You know, we also have the issue of uh, mm -hmm. okay. uh, transfer of, uh, of voters, um, you know, and, and particularly those who did not uh, commission the, the, the transfers. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is that I'm seeing a bit of difference in terms of IBC uh, coming out uh, and uh, not not optimally but you know sharing certain uh, information uh, which uh, unfortunately to it uh, does not uh, look uh, very very uh, well does not portray uh, the image and uh, does send jitters and I think that's why we're discussing this that uh, probably the, the problems uh, and the time scale uh, might uh, surmount uh, the ability of uh, the institution uh, delivering a free and fair election. But I think it coming out and uh, communicating to Kenyans, uh, you know, that uh, yes, we have this and that problem, uh, to me, I think is a good thing. Um, and it also uh, definitely 
by 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 communicating these problems um, uh, it means that it, it is definitely you know getting under the bonnet uh, to see how it can repair the same uh, before uh, Kenyans go for elections or rather uh, you know vote on the on, of the, on the 9th, 9th of August of, uh, right August. Uh, so I think, um, and, 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 and what my colleague uh, just said, uh, I think definitely IBC is overwhelmed uh, right now, but it is doing its level best. We must remember that uh, it's not uh, just within this time, uh, but uh, you know, when you look at the recent history of IBC, mm -hmm. we consider uh, uh, new commissioners uh, who do the job, you know, uh, uh, fairly recently, and uh, but have been doing this, I think, uh, uh, fairly well. Um, it's in hoping that IBC can be resourced uh, very well, and part of it is uh, what Ishmael said uh, by it being given room also uh, to try and tackle some of these things. But I think the, the what may help it uh, and, and, and Kenyans support it okay. is if it uh, still keeps on uh, communicating effectively with All Kenyans, right. uh, if it bring out the image that it is open, that uh, yes, elections uh, and especially preparation of elections will have challenges, uh, but we are up to it, we are identifying the challenges and we're getting to the bottom of it. I think um, this will breed confidence in Kenyans that the elections the management body uh, is uh, keen on ensuring that uh, it operates uh, openly and transparently uh, communicating that uh, we in as much as we have challenges but but i think uh, i think it has failed in terms of of the issue of communication you can hear you know uh not just elog but other experts as well uh who and stakeholders within this uh elections uh process uh, talking about you know the lack of communication uh from iebc some you know uh marcus talking about you know the report that still remains quite you know ibc being cagey about it so but we will come back to that in a moment. Uh, let's just take another a short break here on AM Live as we continue to canvass the issue around the electoral body and where we are and uh, what are some of the glaring issues that uh, IBC is uh, facing. And of course, that short timeline, just about 56 days to the August 9th polls. We'll be back. Stay with us. The Kenya Academy of Sports cordially invites you to the second annual International Sports Conference to be held at the Safari Park Hotel from the 15th to the 17th of June 2022 under the theme Investing in Sports Talent Development for Sustainable Elite Performance. Visit www.kas.or.ke slash KAS Conference 2022. Guys, guys, lipstick is for mommy, not the wall. I said pick one each, one. <laughs> Children, they are cute no matter what they do, but there is nothing cute about fever. Panadol Baby and Infant starts to work on fever in just 15 minutes. Trust Panadol Baby and Infant to work on fever fast to bring back their cute smiles.
is time to unlock Africa's energy potential. Africa's first ever sustainable energy conference. Welcome to Alcaria, the home of geothermal in Africa. It will be a great experience. Tickets available on kenyabuzz.com. Sustainable Energy Conference. Renewable energy for sustainable development. Road embrace. There's a small problem. Someone betrayed me. Took all my money and killed my girlfriend too. I want to take revenge. Lord, thank you very much for saving me. I'm grateful for this second chance at life so I can be with my family for much longer. By the way, Miran, before I forget, um, Dudai has been waiting for you because she uh, has a surprise for you. Borrowed Embrace. The 7th Agritech Africa exhibition is back. Come and interact with over 150 exhibitors from over 25 countries and exclusive pavilions from India, Germany and Turkey. Join us at the KICC from 15th to 17th of June. Right, and uh, we are back. Uh, thank you for staying with us. This is AM Live as we uh, now move the conversation to the stretch, uh, that's a home stretch, on uh, the IBC preparedness. And uh, Damstan, Bobby had, had alluded to a number of issues, but of course, looking at IBC, and we're just less than two months to the election at this point, shouldn't the electoral body have been you know regularly updating its voter register to this point why wait until now to be able to start cleaning up and and doing the cleanup exercise and, and figure and and finding out you know more than 200,000 dead voters in your register you had four years to prepare for this after the 2017 election up until now shouldn't this be a continuous process by law it is a continuous process mm -hmm. but it has an expense it has a financial implication to do that what the IBC is required. Mm -hmm. I get shocked. I saw uh, uh, two candidates, one Raila Odinga mm -hmm. and one William Ruto, raise pertinent issues mm -hmm. about IBC. Mm -hmm. Let me put it to the Kenyans like this. IBC gets funds from parliament to do that those issues that Raila Odinga is raising and those issues William Ruto is raising. Mm -hmm. Raila Odinga from 2017 and William Ruto from 2017 have been controlling parliament. Parliament has never allocated resources to the IBC until a few weeks ago. How do you now ask a body you refused to give funds that it has failed to do that job? It is purely crocodile tears for the two presidential candidates. Two, IBC took the rules and guidelines and amendment to the IBC Act to Parliament. Right. The so amendments were completed mm -hmm. two, three months ago, plus the Political Parties Act. That is when Parliament acted on it, and also some of the uh, amendments were thrown out by the same Parliament. So that was shut down. That is their problem. Third, IBC has been asked on the question that one, for example, the 10 points is that Raila uh, Odinga is asking the returning officers' names to be made public. IBC has put a gazette notice and put permanent returning officers. They are not going to be transferred. It is gazetted there. Two, it is being raised about the register. IBC got funds to hire KPMG just the other day. KPMG has developed an interim report, and IBC has confirmed that on 16th, two days from today, the register will be clean and will be out. On 17th, IBC has published that it is going to have a stakeholders meeting with everybody with a document called a permanent register. So really, when we talk about IBC, the only difference about communication is that the former IBC was communicating politically. 
The new IBC is communicating by circulars, is communicating by the Kenya Gazette notice, it is communicating as and when they have something to communicate. The more the IBC engages the politicians, then the IBC will be bashed and lose credibility the way it lost in 2013, in 2007, in 2017. So me, in my own view, the new form of IBC finds the two people completely flat-footed. Let me bring a new dimension. Every year, in 2007, IBC was fronted to be working for the deep state. In 2013, but, but that, IBC was perceived by NASA and called that it was working for Jubilee. But all these are perceptions. All right, these before. times were perceptions. Right. In this, now 2022, IBC, Raila Odinga is challenging that IBC is not credible. William Ruto is challenging that IBC is not credible. The only two formations that have not uh, raised an issue with IBC is Wajakoya and Mwaure. But then what does that tell mm -hmm. the Kenyans? The Kenyans are, I'm telling the Kenyans that IBC, so long as there is no one formation, it is being said, it is favoring against, then that means mm -hmm. IBC is working for Kenya. You see, okay. that's the yes, is, uh, alluding to mm -hmm. IBC being independent. If you actually go back to that kind of uh, analogy, mm -hmm. which is actually correct analogy, Thank you. Thank then, you for then, that. Then who is IBC? I mean, what, what trust do you have? And if somebody has been something else in the past, the same team comes in. Unless now you're saying that the new the commissioners new yes, who yes. came in have probably made Chepokati to be on toes and ensure that they stick by the law. And if they stick by the law, announce the results from the, uh, you know, Mashinani polling stations electronically, and the same electronics don't change along the way when they are coming to the Nairobi servers, then we can say, yes, the election should be free and fair. Okay. But uh, in terms of both of them complaining, I will go back to my words, those two gentlemen know a little bit more than you <laughs> and me know. <laughs> Marcus, so, so suddenly <laughs> IBC is facing a huge perception issue here. Does it have time to redeem itself? I think, I think it has some time to redeem itself. Uh, not all, not everything is lost. Uh, I think I just want to uh, say two things. Mm -hmm. First, about the public, uh, just public outreach and public communication of mm -hmm. the IABC. Dan seems to uh, suggest uh, that this IBC is like there are many IBCs. <laughs> the IBCs of 2013, yes, of 2017, yes. and 2022 are yes. completely new completely IABCs. Different. <clears throat> but there's something that has been consistent. Uh, if, you're not, if you look at the ISAC Asan led commission mm -hmm. and the Chebukat led commission, there is a sense in which you find the stunning difference about public communication and, uh, and outreach. And, and uh, the first thing that IBC must do uh, is, is, is that it must communicate uh, regularly mm -hmm. and engage with all stakeholders. It is within their mandate to do that. But the other thing that uh, I wanted to speak to is, is, is what was said earlier on. Sometimes we set the IBC to fail. Uh, it is sometimes, it's, it's, it's some, you know, you, you expect, it's like you've hired someone mm -hmm. to do a job, give them their terms of reference, but then you don't facilitate them enough to do their job. So in the end, you come and complain that they are not working yet, you, the, the working conditions are not favorable. So uh, my, my, my point is that, in the end, the IBC must be facilitated uh, by both actors to do their job. And sometimes it's as simple as, say, the National Registration Bureau, for instance, doing its job to help the IBC clean the register. Sometimes it's us as citizens just simply saying, you know, I don't want to be engaged in electoral offense. You are assisting the IBC to do their job. So in the end, we all have roles to play in terms of as the election actors to realize a good election and clear election. So that's number two. The third thing is, is uh, something to do with <laughs> what they were talking about, uh, the focusing on the 55 days left. What is it that the IBC has not done? We've asked the question. Remember, the big lion in the house is the nullification of the 2017 election of the president. Now. 
And Chebukati said to Raila Odinga that they have addressed some of those issues. Mm -hmm. Now, at the back, this election, this election of 2022 will be read against some of the aspects that were raised by the Supreme Court and how well the IBC has addressed some of those issues and, in particular, the issue around the electronic Sorry. transfer of, uh, of, of, of transmission of results mm. is a critical thing. Mm. See what happened at Bomas uh, last, uh, this week. During the simulation. During the simulation exercise. Right. Mm -hmm. We recorded about 45% success rate in a simulation exercise. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, to the extent that that was a major problem in 2017, in a simulation exercise, you record a success rate, a success rate of less than 50% is a major problem. Of course, the IBC came out to explain that the you know they rely on 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 uh, mm -hmm. on, on safari other, other yeah, services yeah yeah providers. so if that is the case as they said perhaps the question should be how then do we work together to ensure that these uh, results transmission become uh, a clean issue and even the protocols around the results trans transmissions are made public and stakeholders involved so for me if you ask me the key issue the result transmission will be a problem, uh, rather not, um, not, not want, will be, but I'm saying it must be addressed uh, and, and made public that this, these are our results. But, and the second thing I want to say, and we discussed, I think, during uh, the break, yeah. the issue of identification of voters. The IBC has told us that uh, they will, you'll be identified electronically. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not very sure whether that decision is exclusive when I go to the polling station there, and for some reason, my fingers or whatever it is, can't, I can't be identified electronically, what happens to me? Mm -hmm. What them, uh, you know, are they with, saying... With exclusion of a manual... Yes, e e yes. Register? Yeah. Are they saying, Dan, mm -hmm. that uh, we won't resort to any form of manual identification? I th I th That's something that is not very clear to me. I think you might weigh in on that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Identification is not... Biometrics mm. start from the eyes to the finger. Mm. The IBC will employ a technology that is not one directional on the fingers. That will have resolved. Because when you go to the banks, if your fingers are not working, they have other digital methods to identify you. Right. Secondly, on the question of facilitation and the question of the law, you, uh, my good friend has put it very clearly. IBC drafted a bill that went to parliament on the question of transmission. Mm -hmm. Parliament rejected. Mm. Yeah. And that parliament, as I've said, is controlled by ODM, is controlled by UDA. It is the same people who rejected the solution and now they want to push it to the IBC. But as we say, IBC has provided within the limited resources mechanisms called solution. Get modems, get satellite, get different types of biometrics to be applied, get at least solutions that will work. That IBC now has very few days to work, and I'm sure Chibukati and his team no. are watching this program and taking notes on what we are raising, <laughs> and they should take, because our voice, is the voice of the country, yeah. is that okay. they should now be more <clears throat> inclusive okay. and bring everybody on board, mm. because this is the penultimate time they are still they are still below 50% mm. success, they can do 80% success right. in the remaining few days. All right. Bobby, uh, as you're coming into this conversation, of course, the issues that Dan Sanomari is alluding to are those particular new regulations by IBC shot down uh, in Parliament. And these were actually meant to address some of the key issues that formed uh, the basis of the Supreme Court nullification of President Uhuru Kenyatta's 2017 election uh, victory. That was the first uh, uh, election. Uh, where does, then does this leave IEBC? Remember, uh, part of the key uh, issue that came out of that uh, ruling and that petition uh, was the transmission of uh, results from the polling stations uh, to the National Tallying Center. Um, and I think even on, on that, we still fall back on the issue of uh, resourcing that we've been talking about uh, with I, about IABC, um, late resourcing limited, uh, because when you look at the issue, uh, with or without uh, regulations, uh, and especially uh, on the issue of uh, transmission of results and, and the 
debate being around uh, where or areas uh, where um, uh, we lack the technology, uh, sufficient technology mm -hmm. uh, for us to relay uh, electronically uh, and digitally uh, those results um, to the headquarters, uh, what happens, you know? And that's why IBC was trying to carve out a way uh, that would allow it uh, to have a plan B or rather or an a, a, a plan C. Uh, but I think, uh, again, it's the issue uh, of perception. It's the issue of, uh, you know, having a, a caveats and, you know, plugging in um, uh, holes that you think uh, would be used as uh, loopholes. Uh, in, uh, you know, if, when, 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 you, when you give an inch, uh, then sometimes uh, people take miles. Um, and uh, sometimes I think what the politicians are trying to do is uh, to ensure that they do not, uh, you know, give that inch. Right. Uh, and especially mm -hmm. the issue of uh, the electronic transmission, because uh, chances are uh, that uh, even those areas uh, with the sufficient uh, technology mm -hmm. uh, or the required technology uh, may eventually decide or something may happen that uh, that technology does not uh, come into play or is not used uh, as it's supposed to be on the very day. So it's, there's also the issue of, of trust. We have to come and remember that, you know, in other countries where they use uh, technology for, for elections, uh, most of the times it's not around repairing uh, trust uh, deficiency, but more of creating efficiency in the, in the system. But in, in our elections, we employ technology first and foremost uh, uh, to try and plug in issues and repair issues of, of, of trust. And I think that's where we have a problem. And that's why it, it always becomes very difficult uh, for us to, you know, trust each other, trust the elections the management body. Um, there are good reasons for it. When you go back to the history of, of elections in this country, uh, and I think that's why uh, both, uh, you know, for two, two of the front uh, runners are raising issues. Ishmael is saying they probably know much better than us, um, <laughs> hang in cheek. Uh, and I, I, I agree with him. Um, and, and, and I think that's what the biggest problem is uh, for us and how we, we uh, prepare and manage elections, that there's a huge uh, trust deficiency um, within our political space. Okay. that it is very difficult uh, for us to repair these issues through regulations or not. Right. But the question, is, uh, and the, for me, I've been asking uh, of, the, of the, I think, a thousand plus, I've uh, been told uh, whether it's polling areas or that do not have uh, 3G technology, mm -hmm. um, what does it take between now and then? Because uh, probably this is where the other agencies come, come in. Uh, this is where government can try and ensure that uh, there is, uh, you know, that level of technology or uh, alternatives to, 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 to that. And I think this is where everyone, sh you know, should put uh, their minds together and try and ensure that uh, we discuss. And I think uh, okay. the question of all of us supporting IBC, because sometimes we talk about elections as if <laughs> it is only IBC. Uh, that is participating in these elections. Right, and, so you know, there are say, suddenly different uh, sect, uh, stakeholders here and key players. So I think this is where we talk right. about resourcing, that mm -hmm. you know, even without the regulations, the issue is the technology you know, uh, and sufficiency uh, of it. Okay. If that could be provided alternatives, right. mm -hmm. uh, then the problem that the regulations or the technology should be ironing out, you know, uh, should be put in place okay, and thanks, we should try Bobby. and do that. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And, and I think it's, it's the issue of perception is suddenly coming up very clearly on this mm -hmm. and the issue of communication as well from IBC. And, and, and then now looking at the systems that IBC has in place with the little timelines, there's still <coughs> other questions of whether um, this thing is taken seriously. Remember Walter Mongare? Yes, sir. He was cleared to vie as, you know, a presidential candidate. And Jimmy Wanjigi comes in. Jimmy Wanjigi is uh, uh, not qualified because of issues with his degree and some other key issues. 
and then he raises, he raises legal, you know, pertinent legal issues, then Mongaria's candidature then is recalled. Mm. What does he speak of, you know, IBC systems? I, I think uh, there's something else I also have seen throughout the whole discussions. It is true that IBC has a, a little bit more to do, mm -hmm. but uh, the issue of interfe external interference mm -hmm. from not only the political B wigs, but even other institutions interfering with the independence of the IEBC <coughs> can actually derail what the IEBC should be doing. Even when we talk about cleaning the register, of course, mm -hmm. the IEBC itself internally may not have all mm -hmm. these capacities, but they can mm -hmm. hire, like right. they've hired KPMG. But uh, look at, for example, just two things I wanted to point out. It is a co the constitution that says that uh, the, the, the gender rule should be implemented by everybody, particularly uh, in uh, government, state institutions and mm. government entities. And IBC moved in to ensure that as far as they are concerned, they meet the constitutional threshold. Mm. So what has the High Court done? It's the High Court has now come in and said, no. that is a violation of probably Article mm. 38 or whichever, that, you know, mm. political rights of an individual. Right, right. These are both constitutional stipulations, political rights, and the gender rule. So I, I think I just want to caution us as lawyers that we should not dance in the air. We, we, we need to be aware of where we are coming from and where we are going so that the constitutional demands are implemented. Simply citing that Article but yeah. 1 says this and Article 90 says this, mm -hmm. it looks cute, looks very romantic, right. but it does not save the country. So we need policies that actually move institutions under the law into practical operation. So that you cannot say, I mean, you saw I, uh, BBI, and yeah, I'm not yeah. trying to say it was any better, but they tried to bring in the concept of we want to ensure that the two-thirds gender rule is implemented. You saw the former Chief Justice saying, actually, members of parliament should dissolve. vote to, you know, dissolve this parliament and go home. But when you ask the same individuals, so, okay, give us an idea. How do we do that? <laughs> then IBC comes up and says, for us, as far as we are concerned as an institution, we will only accept parties that bring us the, 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 the you know, uh, you know. Nomination party list. Uh, uh, you are, uh, the party list which complies with, with the, the constitution. Two then parties are even ready to give the IBC the list. Mm -hmm. Then you find a higher institution mm -hmm mandated to handle disputes like the courts come up and say no even that is not so my point is mm -hmm. that we should also not uh, we should avoid so much interference with other institutions mm -hmm. let institutions create policies that actually can make you feel like you've moved from point a to b right and if you feel that uh, the process used might be unlawful in your dictum, in your final comments, give a solution so that Kenyans can see that, oh, yes, it is true, this particular judgment is going to save us to implement the gender rule. Uh, but to, to leave everything on the air, I mean, it's making lawyers happy, it's making the courts look, uh, look great and good, mm -hmm. but then the, we are not moving the country beyond technicality. Uh, and on the same issue, Dunstan, uh, according to the judge, that is uh, Anthony Mrima of the High Court, uh, he says the decision was not only an internal mechanism by IBC to ensure gender balance, but one which affected a large group of voters whose rights to elect a candidate of their choice would be affected. You see, I don't agree totally with the judgment of mm. uh, Justice Murima on that question because, as, as Rene puts it very clearly, we have struggled with the question of gender. Mm -hmm. We have struggled <coughs> in parliament, we have struggled in court, we have struggled all over. And the courts, actually, a five-bench judgment gave IBC the power to decide when they are taking nomination papers right. that those nomination papers do represent the gender parity and the gender question. Mm -hmm. IBC implemented that. Somebody rushed to court. And the parties, as Nyaribu puts it, were very clear on the question of bringing women to the forefront of politics of election. Now, the judge has said it, it infringes on the right of people to decide. But we have put certain <coughs> conditions, for example, 
the degree qualification for a governor, we have put the degree qualification for a president, does that give the people the right. right to choose? All right. There can never be absolute rights under Article 38 mm -hmm. for people to choose. So that you are saying you can now bring Ugandans to be voted here because Kenyans want it. All right. There must be the law and the spirit of the law. I don't agree with the judge, but for now, that is the position okay. of, of, of the court. All right. Another issue that uh, you have raised very, 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 very pertinent to this question is that when you look at the number of cases that IBC, the current IBC has been sued. So about two hundred and forty. They are almost mm -hmm. a third of the number of cases the IBC of 2017 mm -hmm. and the IBC of 2013 were sued in court, mm -hmm. which tells you that the level of efficiency, the level mm -hmm. of us being prepared is fine. Finally, let me advise very those quickly, who are... Very quickly, very quickly. A, a very small advice. Mm -hmm. The Supreme Court now is fully constituted, seven judges. Mm -hmm. Lawyers, now we are how many? 21,000 lawyers mm -hmm. waiting for election petitions. Right. So let no contestant tell people to go to the streets to throw stones. Okay. Immediately you lose an election, uh, walk to no, our no, law no. firm or any other law firm because the country needs a peaceful transition and the only revenue avenue available is the Supreme Court All right, or the other courts. All right, Dancer. Marcus, I'm giving you only 10 seconds. Your last <laughs> remarks. Well, uh, I just want to uh, 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 reiterate the fact that uh, let's, I mean, because the realization of a credible election is, uh, is, 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 is uh, a reserve, not only of the IBC, but of all other actors, uh, so just to call them uh, to move, uh, this country belongs to all of us. The IBC is not the only body that is mandated to ensure we have credible elections. All these bodies, the citizens, the courts, uh, other government agencies uh, are, 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 are also required to play some part. Mm -hmm. But also uh, to also end that as ELOG, we will be deploying observers in uh, mm -hmm. a number of polling stations will be able to continue to update the country on what will be happening on the elections day. All right. Thank you so much. Marcus Agenga, Senior Programs Manager at the Elections Observation Group, ELOG. Dancer Amari, lawyer, political commentator. Uh, Ishmael Nyaribo, also lawyer and political commentator, as well as Bobby Mkangi via Zoom. Constitutional lawyer, thank you so much, gentlemen, for making the time to be with us this morning to converse around these very pertinent issues, uh, the state of the vol and, uh, the, vol, uh, the poll, and of course uh, the key technology to be used by the electoral agency in just about 56 days to the 9th of August, or 55, depending on whether you're going to count today. Well. This is where I am live ends, but also where your new, new world is beginning. And uh, Winnie Lubembe, uh, good morning. Good morning. How, How are you liking, first I'm of well. all, the waking up in the morning? I know, it's um, <laughs> getting used to it. But uh, right? Yes, how are you doing? doing? So well. Good, good. All right, so what yeah. do we have on your world? So today we'll be talking about the most respected and coveted uh, professions in the, um, in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you want to guess which one? Uh, let me see. Uh, <laughs> journalism, I guess? Engineering. Oh, journalism, well. too. <laughs> right. well, of course, today we'll be focusing on um, engineering and, of right. course, the, the, the education in the country. Do we have enough skill set? Are we preparing the students, you know, with the mm -hmm. required skills to get into the job market right. and what we need to take um, right. you know to get those key students who don't just you know study and then go abroad right. and you know offer right. their skill set um, you know out there so oh, that is fantastic. what we'll be talking about today all right Winnie yes. thank you so I'll let all the right. uh, you handle and take <laughs> over the mantle this has been M live my name is uh, Zenev Isma we'll take a short break Winnie Lubembe will take over the mantle after this break good morning <laughs>